And now, from your favorite pizza waiter, it's snack time! Welcome to Snack Boy. Today, I tell you the tale of oh, it's a beautiful story, people. Gather around your computers because today's story, today's snack, is so soul searching and moving and beautiful that I scarce can contain it within my belly. Today's story, today's snack concerns break dancing. Yes, people! Get yourself in your time machine and go back to the early to mid 1980s before there was the skateboarder, but after the disco, we had that time where everyone who was anyone would whip out the cardboard and they would break dance. They'd break dance for you and they broke dance for me. And I'll tell you, the best break dancers I personally knew up until that point were my two cousins, Nigger White Opie, being my cousin Charlie, and Nigger White James, being my cousin James. And I'll tell you something. Those boys could bust a groove. And I couldn't break dance myself. But every time I got around my cousins, yeah, and Beat Street was on TV. I said, my boys, my cousins. I was very proud. It was, it was like 1984, and Top Gun was the big movie with Tom Cruise. And, and I said, you know what? I'm around my cousins in Rockville, Maryland, here in beautiful Rockville. And I'm watching them break dance, and I'm filled I'm just so excited because they whip out the cardboard and, and pull the cardboard out onto the basketball courts. And they would do the windmill. My cousin Charlie, you know, Nigger White Opie, he'd do the windmill. He'd stop spinning. He'd be spinning. He'd put his legs up in the air. He had the checkerboard, yellow and black pants. He called, everyone called Charlie the bumblebee, and he would be breaking, break dancing, break dancing. He'd do the robot, like, uh, 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 you know what I mean? Where he'd move his body all jerky and do the robot. Oh, he could do the robot. And then Cousin Jim's would be like, hey, Charlie, I'll watch out because I'm about to break dance. And he'd put down the mat and he'd break dance, he'd break dance, he'd move, he'd groove. And they'd listen to the Beastie Boys. Four and three and two and one. When I'm on the mic, the suckers run. I steal your honey like I saw your bike. And they'd be on the break dance, whipping themselves into a frenzy. And they'd do that little sassy pose with the beret at the end. And I'm so proud. I said, why can't I be more? Like my breakdancing cousins, Nigger White Opie and Nigger White James, until one day Skylo came to the neighborhood. Skylo came to the basketball courts where my cousins would break us their dance. And Skylo proved to be the best breakdancer ever, people. He broke dance so well that when he would break dance, I was almost moved to tears. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. Oh, Shib Khan, let me rock you, let me rock you, Shaka Khan. Let me rock you, that's all I want to do is Shaka Khan. Let me rock you, let me rock you, Shaka Khan. Let me rock you, what I feel for you, feel for you. Baby, baby, when I'm this on you. And it was Shaka Khan and this guy, Skylo. He was new to the neighborhood, and he could break it, his dance, no, like no other. He could break dance so well that tears flowed down my cheeks. And I felt bad because my cousins, Nigger White Opie and Nigger White James, would say, Hey, Tom, who's a better break dancer? Us or Skylo? And I, I didn't want to lie, but I was like, well, you guys, I lied. I called Skylo until one day Skylo said, Hey, boys, I'm going to challenge you to a breakdown. That's right, the breakdown, the infamous challenge to a breakdance. And my cousin Jim said, you got it. You're going to be challenged. Consider yourself broke down, boy. And, you know, and Charlie and James threw their cardboard on the ground and started breaking and moving and whipping into a frenzy. And they were breaking and working. And, but they were good. They were fine until Skylo pulled out his mat. And before he did, James and Charlie and Skylo all agreed that myself, because at the time I was a youth group minister, would be the perfect judge. I was a reluctant judge, though. I did not want to hurt my, my cousin's feelings. But Skylo was better, so how could I... How could I let Skylo win when I had cousins at stake? But when Skylo broke dance, it was, it was like poetry. It was like a Dario Argento movie. I, tears streamed down my face. And as Skylo broke the night away, I watched him windmill into the robot, into the work gown, into the shaka cone, into the beastie boy, into the working down, into the top gun. He was breakdancing. And I was like, I can't let my cousins win. I have to let the right one win. So I went into myself and I went into the grasshopper. And I said to the inner grasshopper, which is my shaman guide inside, I said, Oh, Grasshopper, who should win the break dance contest? Should it be my cousins Nigger White Hopi and James, or should it be Skylo? 
the true master grasshopper. And grasshopper said, Smash boy, Terry, get your act together, Skylo. If you're going to be a reluctant judge, you still have to be honest. So when I came out of my blur, out of my orange clown days, I then decided that the winner was Skylo. And just because I was beaten black and blue by my cousin Snicker White Opie, Snicker White James, does not mean that I did not do the right thing. Uh...